we are starting with a new chapter in the unit of uh, human physiology. The chapter is about circulation and the title is body fluids and circulation. This is the chapter in which we would be discussing about a blood, blood vessels, heart, structure of heart and the working, pacemakers, blood pressure, ECG, all these things. But as we are starting this chapter, let us understand few basic things before we take up the actual structures. When we talk of uh, body fluid, something circulating in the body, then the purpose is uniform distribution of either respiratory gases or the food which has been absorbed. So we can classify the circulation into two categories. So we are talking of types of circulations and we will classify it on the basis of where the circulation is taking place and then uh, another criteria whether that is open or closed. Here we are talking of whether the circulation is taking place inside the cell or between the cell. So first is intracellular circulation. This is seen in lower unicellular organisms where actually it is the cytoplasm which is uh, responsible for distribution of gases and the nourishment that is the absorbed food. So in lower unicellular organisms like amoeba or paramecium where only cytoplasm is circulating inside the cell. So it is cytoplasmic circulation and this cytoplasmic circulation is known as cyclosis and the purpose is same for distribution of respiratory gases and the absorbed material. The second type of circulation is extracellular circulation. Extracellular circulation means there is something which is circulating outside the cell or we can say between the cells. This is seen in higher animals. And we will take a couple of examples here when we come to the next category also. In case of higher animals like human beings, it is the blood which is circulating and it is moving between well, the tissues with the help of the capillaries. The blood doesn't come out but the movement is such that the exchange can take place. It is not into the cell. It is outside the cell. So this is called extracellular circulation which is seen in higher animals. This is one way of classifying the circulations or types of circulations. The second classification, we can say this is one and the second type of circulation is what is getting circulated? The type of fluid. Here we classified it. Where is this circulation taking place? Is it inside the cell or outside the cell? And here we are talking of whether it is some outside fluid which is helping in this uh, exchange of gases or uh, supplying this nutrient material or is it a fluid which is inside? So, here also we will have two. Environmental fluid circulation. And this environmental fluid is normally water. So, it is water which is getting circulated. And this is seen in case of sponges. Nidarians like hydra. So the respiratory gases they come in through the same water. Food also comes in through the same water. So in sponges 
there are tiny pores all over the body in case of hydra there is only one opening which acts as inlet as well as outlet so here there is an external fluid which is helping in uh, supplying this respiratory gases as well as the food or nourishment the second type is the internal fluid circulation that means there is some liquid which is inside or some fluid which is inside which is doing this job and here we will have again two three categories blood vascular system that means here blood is responsible for transport of gases and the absorbed material then there can be lymphatic system or lymphatic fluid we can also write hemolymph which is seen in insects like cockroaches and all so here there is a fluid which is inside the body and is helping in circulation so extracellular when we are talking of that means it is taking place outside the cells but between the tissues and that could be blood moving between the tissues or limb or even hemolymph. Now, as we have come to blood vascular system, we will see the classification of this. Whether this blood vascular system is an open type of system or a closed type. Let us see the types of blood vascular systems. One is open vascular system and the second is close vascular system. The difference between these two is in case of open vascular system or open circulatory system the blood or the fluid comes out of the blood vessels and the tissue is actually dipped into that blood or that fluid. Whereas in case of closed circulatory system or closed vascular system, blood never comes out of the blood vessels. So here we have written vascular system. It can also be termed as open circulatory system and same here. Both the terms are commonly used. It can be called open vascular system or open circulatory system. Here, the blood comes out of the blood vessels and the organs or tissues are dipped in the fluid. Are dipped in the fluid. If the tissue is dipped in the fluid, the exchange takes place directly between the blood and the tissue. So here exchange of gases as well as the nourishment or the, the absorbed food is between blood and the tissue or that particular organ. In case of closed circulatory system, here we wrote blood comes out, here we will write blood never comes out of the blood vessels. That means it keeps moving through the blood vessels. Then how does exchange take place? The exchange takes place between the capillaries and the tissue. Now, if we have to just explain this in a simple diagrammatic manner, if we are talking of open, suppose this is the blood vessel which is bringing the blood in. It pours this blood into a depression or an area which is known as sinus. So the blood gets filled here. 
and say in this sinus there is an organ. So this structure which we have drawn here is an organ or a tissue. So the exchange takes place directly between the blood and this organ. And another blood vessel is going to collect this fluid and take it away. Because blood is coming out of the blood vessel, the system is known as open circulatory system. Exchange is directly between the tissue and the blood. Now let us see what happens in case of closed circulatory system. The blood is brought by this blood vessel. This blood vessel, it divides into very fine branches which we call the capillaries. These, they join to form, they join to form the vein. So this is an artery and this is a vein which is carrying the blood away. Exchange, here is a tissue. The exchange of gases or nourishment takes place from the capillaries to the tissue and from the tissue to the capillaries. The blood which is coming here is actually flowing through these tubes and the blood never comes out of the tubes or these blood vessels. And that is why this system is known as a closed circulatory system. Here the exchange is directly between the blood and the organ or in other words we can say that the organ or the tissue is dipped inside this fluid and this fluid is normally hemolymph which we will discuss in detail when we talk of circulatory system in cockroaches. This is in case of higher animals. So one vessel brings the blood Exchange takes place through capillaries and the vein takes the blood away from that tissue. And exchange is taking place through the wall of the capillary. This is the difference between the open and the closed circulatory system. In human beings, the closed circulatory system is found. Now when we talk of human circulatory system, We will discuss it under three main heads. The first is about the blood vessels. That means we will talk about arteries, veins, capillaries, their structure, the comparative things. Then we will talk about the tissue that is blood and lymph. When we discuss blood, we'll talk about all the corpuscles, plasma, their individual functions, structure, number, everything. Same thing for lymph. And third, the important pumping organ, that is the heart. And after we are done with this, we will take up certain different uh, conditions. After we understand the structure of the blood vessels, what is the composition of blood? heart structure then we will come to the types of circulation like systemic or pulmonary cardiac cycle and all those things after we understand these structures so from the next segment we will actually start with the human circulatory system and we'll start with blood vessels